Jim Schlegel from Kutztown. This is Side for Deitch. Hey everyone and welcome back to your Pennsylvania Dutch Minute. Thanks for that intro, Jim from Kutztown. What Jim didn't tell you is that he's the mayor of Kutztown, Pennsylvania. He's such a humble guy. Thanks so much, Jim. Don't forget, if you'd like to be the intro video for any of my videos, just send me a video clip of you doing exactly what Jim just did. Say, hi, I'm Jim from Kutztown, Pennsylvania, and as is site for Deitch. You send that to my email, and I'll get that bad boy onto the beginning of one of our videos. This week, I got another viewer request with a great question. In fact, I want to pull the question up and just read a little bit from it. Um, so the person that emailed me said, hey, what is essentially the deal between Pennsylvania Dutch, Standard German, High German, Hochdeutsch, and Swiss German. Like, please clarify what all those terms are. And that is a great question because I think if you have never studied German or if your only background is in Pennsylvania Dutch, you might have heard those terms before but never really understood like what you know, quite what are they? So this isn't going to be an in-depth linguistic video. I mean, there are linguists out there that could talk at hours for the differences between German and, and dialects and Swiss German and all this stuff. Uh, but today I just want to get you down and dirty, get you some basics so you understand a little bit more, um, you know, what the differences essentially are and, and what do they mean? So we look at this chart. I made this up, and this is in no particular order. First off, let's let's make sure we understand one thing. The person who asked the question wanted to know. You know, they heard the word Hochdeutsch. They were the they heard the term High German. They had the, heard the term Standard German. Hochdeutsch is the Pennsylvania Dutch word for Standard German. And what's Standard German? Standard German. You can just refer to it as German. It's the German that is spoken in Germany today. The, the, the uniform language that if you took German in high school, you were learning Hochdeutsch or Standard German. Now, why is it referred to as High German sometimes? Because you have to remember that Germany is made up of a lot of dialects and other um, we can use languages throughout its territory. We have uh, dialects that I'll talk about like Pelsish and Hessish and Schwabish, but there's a difference between high German and low German. So, and it, it has to do with elevation. The southern part of Germany, where the Alps are, is higher in elevation. Low German is spoken in the northern parts of Germany, where Germany is very flat, going towards the North Sea. So that's where the term comes from, high German, low German. Sometimes people will say, oh, Pennsylvania Dutch is low German. Well, there's, we got to be careful how we say that. Let's just say that Pennsylvania Dutch is Pennsylvania Dutch, okay? On the other side of this chart, I have just a couple of, of regional dialects spoken in this part of Europe where a lot of the Pennsylvania Dutch come from. Of course, we I threw the, the language Pennsylvania Dutch over there, which we've talked about it before, you know, where, how our language developed, where it comes from, etc. But then I included a bunch of other ones like Felsish, which is the dialect spoken in the Palatinate or one of the dialects spoken in the Palatinate. Then there's Rhinish, which is a dialect spoken along the Rhine River. There's Hessish, what's spoken in Hessen. There's Alsatian, or what's known sometimes as Alemanisch, which is spoken in the Alsace region of France. You have Schwabisch, which is spoken in the Swab in Swabia in southwestern Germany. You have Plautdeutsch, which we did a video on before, which is spoken up in the northern part of Germany. And then you have Swiss German, or which is sometimes known as Schwitzerdeutsch. Um, and there's other terms for it as well. Those are all individual languages or dialects. They are not Standard German. Standard German is its own language. It has a uniform spelling, a uniform grammar rules, etc., etc. Your dialects are spoken, not usually taught in schools. They are spoken at home, uh, much like Pennsylvania Dutch is, if you want to think about it that way. So that's where we can at least make that break. Now, let's talk real quickly a little bit about High Hochdeutsch or High German, in German, of course, known as Deutsch. You know, when for us as Pennsylvania Dutch people, where we really come into contact with Hochdeutsch for the most part when we're looking at our history is as our Protestant groups emigrated to America in the late 1600s, early 1700s, we brought with us our faith. And our faith was that of the Protestant Reformation, whether we were Lutheran, whether we were Reformed, whether your family was Moravian, whether your family was plain, meaning Mennonite or Amish, we all came over using Luther's translation of the Bible, which was in 
the German of that era. And it was maintained even into the 1800s. It would not be uncommon to go to church services in Pennsylvania where things were, where the service was still being done in German, in standard German. Now you kind of start scratching your head because a lot of those Pennsylvania Dutch farmers that were sitting there in the pews never really were educated in German. They didn't have a very strong grasp on standard German. Of course, at home they were speaking Pennsylvania Dutch, but the actual service and the liturgy of the church was done in standard German. Oftentimes the pastor might preach in Pennsylvania Dutch, but the the liturgy when you think of like the traditional liturgy of the Lutheran Church or of the use of the Church the UCC United Church of Christ the Reformed Church the Calvinists the liturgy itself was in Standard German hymns were sung in Standard German eventually that would change and churches would switch over to English of course as we move into the 1900s but that was in our DNA in my home church Becker St Peter's Lutheran Church in Mulltown Pennsylvania. You can go up in the upstairs part of the church, and there are German language Bibles from the you know from the 1800s up there because that's what was used before. The one thing we need to remember is that Standard German, High German, Hochdeutsch, whatever you want to call it, as it stayed in Germany and as the years progressed, we had left. Of course, we were here in in America doing our thing and developing our language German spoken there also developed as new things were invented new german words were created the language evolved it evolved separate from us just like pennsylvania dutch evolved separate from german so yes our dna is in a form of german older German, but the German that is spoken today on the streets of Germany, what's taught in schools in Germany, what's taught in high schools here in the United States, if you take German, is not the same as Pennsylvania Dutch. We share a lot of words, we share grammar, but it's not the exact same thing. Oftentimes when somebody from Germany comes to Pennsylvania as a tourist, for example, and gets into Pennsylvania Dutch country and they meet a Pennsylvania Dutch speaker, they speak German to them and the average Pennsylvania Dutch speaker does not will not understand them or will have a very difficult time understanding them if they speak a dialect from the region where we're from like felsish or hessish or schwabish some Pennsylvania Dutch speakers will have a little bit of an easier time understanding them but it's not always guaranteed that they're going to understand everything there really is a divide um so we always have to remember that the language developed, our languages developed separately. There wasn't this strong German influence in the 1800s influencing Pennsylvania Dutch. It wasn't there. So there is a difference. Now, let's quickly talk about Swiss German. So Schwitzerdeutsch or Swiss German or German spoken in Switzerland, we need to remember that Ger Switzerland itself is its own country, of course, and it really has three major languages spoken within the country. There's German, there's French, and there's Italian, and it's regionally divided. There's the German-speaking region of Switzerland, there's the, the French-speaking region of Switzerland, and the Italian Swiss, uh, region of Switzerland, and there are also other small minority languages spoken in Switzerland as well. Um, but why this has a little bit of a tie to us is that the Amish and the Mennonite faiths have their starts in Switzerland and before the Amish and the Mennonites fled Switzerland they were speaking Swiss German history tells us they eventually made their way to the Rhine Valley as they were pushed out of Switzerland because of religious persecution they stayed a couple generations in and around the Palatinate region in the Pfalz before eventually making their way north to Amsterdam getting on boats going to England and then eventually making their way here so there is still some strong Swiss German influences in the plain people's of Pennsylvania and of the United States here, your Amish and your Mennonite. The, the giveaway a lot of times is the diminutive form is what I always use it as an example. What I mean by diminutive form is what you put on the end of a word to make it smaller. So the difference from a cup to a small cup. In Swiss German, the, the diminutive form is usually adding an L-I to the end of the word, where in non-Swiss German influenced Pennsylvania Dutch, like the Pennsylvania Dutch spoken where I grew up, being not plain, we end, we put a C-H-E on the end as a diminutive form. So I take the word cup, like to drink out of a, a, a cup and a saucer. In non-Swiss 
Pennsylvania Dutch or non-Swiss influenced Pennsylvania Dutch, it would be Kopje, K-O-P-P-C-H-E. But if you had more of that Swiss influence, they will say Kopli. And there are these differences between Amish and Mennonite speakers as opposed to non-Amish and Mennonite speakers of Pennsylvania Dutch. Swiss German is still spoken in Switzerland today, of course. Um, and to be honest, it's if you're a German, even people's, people from Germany who travel to Switzerland, it is difficult for Germans to understand Swiss German. It's, it's a strong accent to begin with. They use words that aren't exactly the same vocabulary words. And they'll do things like, you know, adding an L-I, for example. So that's why you will hear, I mean, we have some... There's some strains of Swiss German in Pennsylvania Dutch, and depending on your background, you might have more Swiss German influence in your Pennsylvania Dutch than other people. It depends a lot. Really, the main divider is on that faith line. Are you a plain person or, or do you, you know, are you influenced by plain people as far as your language is concerned or not? So I thought I'd just close out the video with a real quick comparison. I chose four words and I gave the standard German word. The Pennsylvania Dutch word and a Swiss German version of that word too. So if we look at this table, I started off with a way of saying hello. So good day in standard German, guten Tag. In standard Pennsylvania Dutch, guter dog. You've heard me say that a lot. And in Swiss German, if you went to Switzerland today, you would hear people say grüzi. Now you can tell right away, all three are different. Of course, the PA Dutch and the standard German are eh, kind of close, but they're not exactly the same thing. And that Swiss German there, boy, that's that that really looks different and sounds different. Let's take the word cat in standard German, katze. In Pennsylvania Dutch, we have two terms, depending on which one you grew up with. We have katz and we have busli. Sometimes I've also heard Pennsylvania Dutch people say the word busi. Now you think to yourself, oh, that's just an English, you know, English loan from like the word pussycat. But actually look at the Swiss German word, busy. So you can see the influence of Swiss, Swiss German in some Pennsylvania Dutch. And it makes sense given that, you know, a, a good portion of our of our uh, people, total people, have that Swiss influence. Potato, standard German, kartoffel. In Pennsylvania Dutch, grumbia. And in some parts of Germany, in these regional dialects, you might see the word Erdapfel, which means earth apple. Uh, look at the Swiss German, Herdapfel. So you can see that difference there between the languages. And then finally, I took the word someone in standard German, jemand. In Pennsylvania Dutch, Epa. In Swiss German, Erpa. So you can see that the Swiss German and the Pennsylvania Dutch, in that case, are much more similar than the standard German. That was a lot of information I threw at you, but I think it's I think it's really interesting, especially me being a language nerd, that you can see how these various regional dialects and languages share things, but also can be really different, even though geographically they might only be a couple miles apart. I hope that answered the original question. I hope it gave you guys a little bit of a, a little bit more knowledge on, you know, the you know, when you hear the word high German or when you hear the word standard German or when you hear the word Swiss German, what is that? And you can kind of like now at least get a part of the bigger picture in that. So if you have more questions, of course, or if there's something I said that's wrong, correct me down below in the comments. People love to do that, and that's fine. I don't want to leave a false statement out there hanging. If you have an idea for a future video, email me, please. If you'd like to support the channel, of course, you can buy me a coffee. I have a link there in the show notes that can uh, give you that opportunity. If you'd like to have yourself introduce one of my future videos, send me a video of yourself using the email address at the end of the video here. Until next time, keep practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch and Mox Goot. Mox Goot!